I'm Franz Hallas, I'm guitarist and I mainly try to follow the old Roman idea carpe diem and uh, that means I try to enjoy um, everything which is surrounding me and that means mainly my family, the music, nature and of course good food. Why guitar? Well, it's pretty simple. I got in touch with Andres Segovia and when I was 10 years old I got the opportunity to listen a concert of him and my family wasn't very wealthy so we just had a ticket for the last row in the Herkules Saal in Munich which is a huge hall and I remember like today when he played his first Apoyando I was I, I wanted to jump up and, 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 and cry. I mean, this was really the first Apoyano he played. And, uh, and then, of course, I was listening several times after that. And he gave somehow this virus to my, to my heart and infected me very strongly. What profession would you choose if you hadn't become a musician? I would be pizzaiolo, I think. <laughs> I love pizza and I love to do pizza. Tips for people who are starting to play classical guitar. Well, first, well, don't listen too much to guitar. Describe your ideal practice day when you are preparing for a CD recording or a concert. Well, the first is, uh, of course, getting up, having a good cappuccino. Um, not in that profession like Marco Tamayo, but, uh, well, um, a good cappuccino is important. And uh, then I walk with the dog in the lake or in the sea. And then, well, let's say two hours practicing with a break and very slowly, very concentrated, but always with fun. So if I don't have fun, then I stop. Then, of course, a good, good food for lunch and a very nice uh, intensive siesta, which is very important, I think, because uh, it, uh, it helps to, to memorize all the music you learned in the morning. And then I get up after the siesta having a nice tea and uh, again, maybe two hours of practicing, not more than this. So I think if you have a effective technique and if you have very clear, a very clear intention what you want to do in a piece, then it's kind of unhealthy for you to, to practice more than, let's say, four or five hours. The reason you use artificial nails I decided pretty late in my career to to use artificial nails and it, it has really not just this advantage that I don't have to uh, use uh, or find a, a position which is good for my nails. No, I can des design the nails in that way that it, they are fitting to my position of the right hand. I think that's a lot more clever. And the other thing is that, is of course, it's a lot more practical uh, when you travel. So there's no fear anymore that your nails are too short, that you lose it in the airport when taking your suitcase. And, uh, well, I see just advantages here. Some of your practice secrets that you use every time. Many secrets. The most of them I learned from my wife, Deborah, which is a brilliant uh, pianist. And... Um, I think it's, it's very important that you never separate technique from music. The only thing what you should take care of is you should take so much time that you combine music and technique from the beginning. The biggest mistake is to practice too fast. Because when you are practicing slowly, you can control everything. You cannot just control the movements of your fingers, you can also control um, the dynamic, the legato, the articulation, all the things which makes the interpretation to that what you, where you want to have it. And I think this synthesis between 
technik and, and music you never should give up what is a guitar competition for you positive and negative sides so first the positive uh, i think it has a very pedagogical sense so you learn to to play 100 percent or even more than this the negative side is that that you lose or you can lose the um, the sense of being a musician so what means to be a musician it 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 you it's you you talk a language music and you talk not just for yourself you talk to the audience and i think it's absolutely ridiculous to judge something like this it's so personal so individual if you want to judge this you uh, it means you um you are kind of um, discriminating really some individual artists for that reason i really think competitions are that very bad thing the question is really there are they helping to motivate or are they in general even doing the opposite so this is a rhetorical question everybody can find his answer for itself but uh, last not least i think it has to be said this is really my personal uh, opinion but also my my experience they don't help really for career cd recording process from the inception of an idea to release on the example of your last cd well i think uh, what nowadays um, is important as it probably was always is how remarkable is an idea which you want to bring out uh, on a cd because you have to sell it it's very simple it's not an just an idealistic thing it uh, you have to sell it because if you don't sell it the record company will not hire you again and um, there is there is no way to do another label uh, another um, cd next step is to um, of course that the um, the idea fits to you but in in that way i have to say i did so many different uh, programs on cd and i have to say also several ones which i didn't like for example toro takemitsu i have absolutely no connection to him and uh, his music and i practiced it i think four weeks or something like this and recorded the cd so i think you have to be in this way uh, like an actor so for example i'm thinking immediately in leonardo dicaprio for example which uh, has this incredible profession to switch in a role and uh, and and really gets in this getting to this character and i think a good musician should be able to do this so if if somebody calls you can you record um, uh, i don't know beatles songs or um, takemitsu or sonatas of bach in 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 some months you should be able to say yes because you should have the profession um, yeah i think it's more it's mainly the profession to to realize that um the real heart for something which is beating for a special idea i think that's that's luck if you if you got a program like this then it's luck and for example my last cd my my bach recording with lute suites that's something which which really hit my heart because since that time in cologne when i was in that choir singing all that uh, overtories and masses of bach um, i yeah it's uh, it's for me it's the perfect synthesis of emotion and uh, rational thoughts um, the same maybe i can say about spanish music but in general i think you have to be really a professional actor in that sense your last cd johann sebastian bach the lute suites have you fully realized your ideas well simply you can never realize all the ideas what you have about bach i'm i'm sure i i don't know 
I'm for sure not. So the music is too complex. It's uh, I mean you can you can spend your whole life with a fugue of Bach somehow, and 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 you will not be happy probably at least not me, and uh, and of course not on a guitar. I mean a guitar is such a stiff instrument, and I think it's the worst to record Bach because it doesn't fit at all to the to the Baroque agogic. So the Baroque agogic is the is the, probably the most flexible style we had in all the centuries. And uh, flauto traverso or uh, violin, but even a harpsichord, I think, is uh, is, is more flexible than a guitar. And uh, for that reason, it needs a really hard work to realize your musical idea in that sense on a guitar. How to play with piano good? Wow, well this follows me, I think this question, as long as I'm married to Deborah, my wife, who is the pianist, I'm all playing my, my marriage. <laughs> and I remember very well when I met her, uh, after the, Meeting her, listening to her Rachmaninoff playing, I think I I try to avoid really for two weeks not to play guitar for her, and because I was really shocked and um, and jealous on this incredible potential of her piano and the pianist. And after some weeks, she she asked me to play something for her, and I did that finally. Uh, and, and somehow she just said, oh wow, you're really talented. So I, I got very proud on that and um, after some months I married her. Uh, of course, not because of this. But uh, so we sit pretty quickly together on a piano and at that time I had a Hauser guitar and which I liked very much and we tried to play together and I very quickly found out that my attack is so much more aggressive than her attack. And so up today, I try to get more sustain and less attack. And if you get that and more volume by side, you can play with piano. How to get a Grammy? Well, that's lottery, I think. So you, um, you have no idea why somebody is choosing that um, for a closer selection and why that they choose it for a final decision, I think there are hundreds of brilliant CDs, better CDs. This is, for me, this is lottery. Your advice to young guitarists who are starting to build their career in the music world? Well, I think you should start to look around you and try to understand how the world is really running nowadays. And, and this you should put in, 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 you have to compare with, with your own uh, identity as a musician and as a guitarist. And somehow you have to bring the two, two parts together which will be for sure not always an easy thing because it's not easy to understand the world around you in sense of marketing, in sense of social behaviors. Um, but I think it doesn't help. You have to be very honest. If you, if you are not honest, if you don't make a real strong research of the market and the society around you, you will not be able to survive not in a university, not uh, in the CD market, not in concert market. I think um, we have to face that. And with guitar, for sure, it never was easy. But today, it's also not the easiest thing. So, yeah. Why the Hochschule für Musik in Munich is one of the best places to study classical guitar? Yeah, come to Munich to study guitar. But I think it's not the best place because of uh, me. I think it's the best place or could be the best place because it's one of the real capitals of classical music. We have here three world-class orchestras. We have 
a huge university. There are a lot of famous uh, professors teaching in the other subjects. And I think the biggest um, advantage is to make chamber music with all the students of this famous and um, fantastic professors. How to become a student of Franz Hallers? Which role plays pedagogic in your life? Well, I think pedagogic is, is kind of a reflection. For me, when I teach students, it's a kind of a reflection that um, shows how far I'm uh, learning myself in a, in a special field. Could be technique, could be music interpretation. Ah, this I forgot, how to become a student of Franz Hallers. I think mainly you have to show me that uh, music for you is the most important. And, uh, and then comes, of course, a big heart for the sound of the guitar. Modern guitars that you advise to listen to? Of course, never guitar. <laughs> listen piano, listen violin and, and, uh, and singers. Um, simply because you, you, that what you listen is influencing you the, the most and there is no doubt about that uh, there are instruments that have more potential in sense of legato, dynamic, articulation, flexibility, agogic, um, volume, um, and of course, when you listen something, it, it, it's, um, it's a very important pedagogical um, process. I mean, you, you listen something and you want to be like that what you hear. And for that reason, if you, if you listen uh, a great played uh, Beethoven sonata on a piano, then you will play your Giuliani sonata eroica for sure in a different way. Or let's say, if you listened once Sonata Eroica played on a piano, then um, it sounds like a uh, light zona, sonata of, or sonatina of Beethoven. And for sure, you will play differently on your guitar afterwards. Musicians of all time that you admire? Well, of course. One of the first one was Andres Segovia and this left a, a huge inspiration for me. It's, I don't know why, it's for sure the, the, the kind of sound he produced was one thing, but um, this, this idea of real individuality, um, how to create a uh, cantilena, for example, this is something what, we, what deeply impressed me. Then, of course, there is uh, Vladimir Horowitz and from the pianist side, for sure, the most impressive pianist I ever heard was, was Arkady Vorlodos and uh, his way of dynamic, of his, he, his touch for the piano, his, um, his huge flexibility, well, this was some of the real highlights and, of course, I saw Paco de Lucia live and that also was one of the concerts where I really start to scream. Do you have your own special source of inspiration? Well, I think that to get a real inspiration you have to, to clean up your senses and this probably for me works the best on my boat. To feel the wind, the waves, the sun, to fight against the, the, um, the power of nature and uh, to find out your borders, your limits. That's probably a very good field to, yeah, to clean up that. What do you do on long distance flights? Oh my God, I put on my Bose headphones and try to survive. Your bad habits, well, I think I can be sometimes too directly and not polite. For that I'm very sorry. That's my way. What's your superpower? My wife.
the most shameful thing you've ever done in your life? Well, trying to play Bach on guitar. Do you have any other passions besides music? Of course, a lot. Yeah, I'm a captain of a boat. This is one patient. So then, of course, I'm a really enthusiastic cook. I love to, to on my journeys, to discover new ideas for recipes. And um, as I was one time with our boat in Napoli, I really found out to do the, the proper way of our Napolitanian pizza. And I think, That's a really strong profession. What does family life mean to you? I'm a little bit unhappy that I spend so much time in my life um, on traveling, on being focused on projects, um, that I didn't have that much time for the family which they had deserved. But nowadays I'm so happy that the kids are really grown up and we have a real good family life. I think it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a healthy society. I'm, I'm very thankful for that and probably I don't deserve it, but uh, yeah, I'm very happy for that. How do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Oh, please not. This is one of my biggest fears, getting older. Well, no, I don't want to talk about that. Blitz section. Say the first thing that comes to your mind. Caroli or Sor? Of course, Fernando Sor. I mean, who is not loving his uh, polyphonic? Who is not loving his very fine style? Rodrigo or Sainz de la Massa? Of course, we all love the second movement of Arantius. But Science de la Massa for me has a very unique uh, talent for melodies, for harmonies. It's never boring. It's a little bit like, like uh, Gershwin. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a natural talent for a melody which you have or you don't have. And Science de la Massa is for me one of the really top composers for guitar. Takemitsu or Henze? Definitely Hans Werner Henze. He is one of the latest composers in the 20th century who I think he had a real um, a classical education as a com composer. And I like his, his approach, his, um, that he's, he's somehow, as a good composer should be, I think in my opinion, he's, he's, um, he's trying to build up the perfect synthesis of emotion and, and rational thoughts. Barroeco or Russell? Well, both are great um, guitarists. I th it's, it's hard to say. I love the recordings of the early recordings of Barroeco when he played uh, Albenis or Granados. That's a really landmark in, in guitar recording. But I love The sound of David Russell, it's one of the best in the field for sure and especially live. Spruce or Cedar? I think I played, of all that 30 or 40 guitars I had in my life, I played for sure 90% Spruce guitars. I, I love the intensity of a Spruce. And of course I like the good playing ability of a cedar and also some, some kind of spicy flavor of the sound. But in general, I prefer really spruce. Interpretation or restoration? Good question. I think that the, the piece is dead. And I think it's starting to be alive when it's is floating through you, through your mind, through your body, through your hands. And this means it's of course a very personal thing and it should be because otherwise there's no reason why we should listen to this and this and this and this artist. And then there should be one uh, recording for once and forever of a composer and that's it. No, there is, it's, it's this individual um, moment is 
essential, I think. But on the other hand, of course, what stimulates me, what is stimulating my individual senses to play like this or this, this depends a lot on my knowledge, on what I know about the music, what I heard about the music, how I heard this music on other instruments, in which um, different ways of interpretation. This is all uh, is affecting me and in the end it, it, it comes together in this huge uh, melting pot and um, Yes, and then in the end it comes something out which is, I think, a mixture of that. Are you a good musician? Yeah, well, for sure not. Are you a good teacher? Well, you have to ask my students. Are you a good person? You have to ask my wife. What ingredients do you need to use for pizza called Franz Hallers? Wow. First, you need a very good dough, Neapolitan recipe, which means at least 48 hours in the fridge. And it's a very special, very delicate combination out of flour, yeast and water. And it's really a mystery to get a good dough. Then you need the best tomatoes from San, uh, uh, San Marzano, which you can get. And I would put on this pizza, I think, um, a good mozzarella di buffalo and cor Korean kimchi. This is the latest thing I found out. It tastes really delicious. So the latest pizza called Franz Hallas, I think, would be that. And then, of course, you have to put it in an oven which 480 degrees and bring it to a successful end. Rafael Aguirre answers the question. What ingredients do you need to use for a pizza called Franz Haller? You need to choose the right answer. First, tender dough, ricotta cheese, fresh basil, rucola, because you are so gentle and sensual musician. Wow, thank you, Rafael. Double mozzarella because you like six up for grass shavings because you're always talking that we need to be more expressive. Fouet because you like Barcelona shrimps because you like to navigate the sea. Bratwurst because you are a German and papaya because you like Brazil. Number three, artichokes, flavorful artichokes, anchovies, carpers, pepperoni and chili because you are a very individual, non-standard and inventive person. Wow. Strong and deep bases, bright and colorful trebles, some unbelievable trills, flavored with a beautiful long melody line because you are really special musicians. Well, I would love the number four, <laughs> but I think it's the number two. So, if you want to make the pizza called Franz Hallas, you need the, those ingredients. Because he likes the thick sound so much, you will put du double mozzarella. Then he's always talking that we need to be more impressive, the guitarists, like the pianists and the violinists. So I would suggest to use some foie gras shavings, like thin lines. And then he likes so much Barcelona, so I would put some fouet. This is like a salami from Catalonia. He likes to navigate the sea, so I would put some shrimps. Something from Germany, because France is German, so maybe some little sausages, like <laughs> bratwurst. And then because he likes so much Brazil, where Deborah is from, I would put some papaya. That's yeah, that's it, Rafa. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, you are really a fine person. You know me better than I thought. But uh, I don't know how, how this pizza will taste. <laughs> but next time we meet, I will try to make a pizza for you with that. And then let's see. <laughs> Your present and a question from you to our subscribers. What do you want me to record next? Schubert, Beethoven, Fernando Sor. The most interesting answer is getting the latest CD I recorded with the Lute Suites. And uh, yeah, give me some ideas. Thank you.
Korduk Guitar Platform.